What are you looking at, buddy? What do you think you're doing? What are you do- Oh no! Right to the ground! That rabbit never even saw it coming! <laughs> Hello everybody, Grace Still Place, and we're back with more Title Ecology. No time for BS, we're here in the grasslands again. And we've got quite a bit going on here, holy cow. There is a bison taking a sleep, and then a pronghorn antelope as well. There's plenty going on here, and everything is in full bloom. Look at all of the plant life that has just sprouted all over the ground. What is this little creature? Oh, the jackrabbit having a... Catching... <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I think he's running in his sleep or something over there. We have a couple of areas over here that don't have a lot of plants. I want to go ahead and put some down pretty much immediately. Put down some sagebrush along with some milkweed, I do believe. If I can find a little segment for it. There we are. Milk vetch is always nice as well. It's a very bountiful looking plant. And I appreciate it being here in our biome. A couple of these blazing stars because if you remember we had quite a little blazing star pasture right over here. Actually, it looks pretty darn cool. Oh yeah, there's another one right there. Eastern Cottonwood. Um, I do kind of want to put one right over by this island, right about yonder. There we go, right on the waterfront. Looking great. This is interesting. What's going on here? Is this a... <laughs> is this a cougar territory right above a Buffalo grass? Did I do this? How did this happen? How did I manage this? Oh well, whatever. Because you click on it and it looks like I'm supposed to be clicking on some buffalo grass, but instead, oh, there's my weekly income. Speaking of which, uh, gotta press that so that we're moving right along. We have a lot of Taito coins. Like, a lot of Taito coins. And that's just fine with me. We'll go ahead and use all those. First, I want to get some more pollinators over here, and my favorite these days is kind of the honeybee. Because they do a whole lot, and I really appreciate their value. And a couple coyotes could be over here as well. Some ants for our scavengers. I'm not 100% sure exactly what scavengers do, but I would imagine that they somewhat handle Ditrius. That's, I mean... That's kind of what I would figure. It's not, they're not a decomposer, so it's not quite the same, but I mean, like, they're ripping stuff, you know, that's left behind from the ground, right? I don't know. Kind of seems like it might be something they might do. Put these mule deer over here. A little close to the, a little close to this cougar. But I don't know, maybe I'll leave them along long enough to allow us to continue fleshing out this biome. And when I say fleshing out the biome, guys, realize that this is the other side of the biome. We have reached almost all the way around, which was one of my overarching goals. Now some prairie dogs. Actually, I want to put down at least, at least a couple of prairie dogs. If I remember correctly, prairie dogs live in, what was it, a prairie dog town, I think it was? I'm almost sure it was. Let's go over here to the bio decks. I think it was in the notes section. Yes! The largest prairie dog town. They large. They live in large groups called towns. It has complex underground systems. That's pretty darn cool, if I do say so myself. We haven't had any gray wolves. I think we should get some. These guys are loners, right? Let's put them way over here. If you look, their area of, of travel is way out there. Look at how far that goes. That's almost the entirety of the zone. Oh. Apparently these wolves are the, oh, there it goes. I was gonna say these wolves are the, uh, I don't know, the, the wolves that don't appreciate hard work and laborious activities. It just kind of took a, took a fall right to the ground there. All right. Let's go ahead and read about these wolves, actually. I haven't done that yet. Wolves are generally nocturnal. They are often described as howling at the moon when they make their signature sound, but wolves actually howl at all times of the day to communicate with one another. Wolves are very social animals who live in packs with up to a dozen wolves. Packs are led by an alpha male and female who get 
to have the first share of food and are the only ones allowed to breed within the pack. Mmm. Very interesting. Wolves bark, growl, nip, or bite each other, roll onto their backs, and touch each other's chins to show their rank. Notes. Even though friendly... Though every friendly household pooch is descended from a wolf, dogs and wolves have very different personalities. Wild wolves are generally terrified of humans and extremely dangerous if cornered. Some wolves can be tamed if they are carefully raised. Wolves can also interbreed with dogs and coyotes. There was an interesting thing that I actually... Ooh, let's read this here. Gray wolves are apex predators. They have little to fear from other creatures in the wild. Pups, however, are vulnerable to predators like eagles and coyotes. Good to know. A group of ants has low population. What's going on with you guys? You guys getting beaten up by the uh, the prairie dogs or something? Holy cow, they really do have low population. They are getting the crap kicked out of them. I don't even know why. Oh, the prairie dog sounds. It blows my eardrums out. Why, prairie dogs? Why? What I was going to say is I learned that gray wolves, uh, well, not just gray wolves, but I should say wolves in particular, have such care for their pack that even if a wolf pack is participating in a hunt, if there is a possibility of getting one of the pack injured, they will find a different way to take down whatever it is they're stalking. So I think that's kind of cool that like the pack works together in such a way that they value each other heavily i guess to the point where they won't even make a decision if it puts someone at risk that is pretty cool and i can appreciate that in an animal species i think that's really neat what is this over here is that a coyote is that a coyote oh is the wolf getting a drink oh no i guess he's just resting by the river for a second there i thought i saw that wolf's head like bob into this this river here and that would have been really cool if, if that has not yet been added, that might be something to consider, developers. Also, I kind of wonder if there's anything... Oh, they someone is eating the fish. Look at this. 44 of 50 fish in this river. So these fish do get eaten. I had no idea. I wasn't sure if that was true or not. But apparently it is. Let's go over here and grab a whole bunch of grass. Because we're going to need it. And I want to get this grass pretty much everywhere. Now... You can pretty, you can tell for the most part that this grass, once it starts to grow, like it goes everywhere. I mean, I don't, I do not remember placing all of these grasses down single-handedly. And look, every time I'm putting down a grass right now, it's just one chunk of grass. There is no way I took the time to do this. I am a fairly hard-working individual, but I, even I can't do this, guys. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> What do we have going on all throughout the Greylands here? I'd like to take a look. Oh, there's buffalo running. Look at the buffalo run there. They're not just roaming. These guys are getting their cardio in. That's what I'm talking about. Sean T would be proud, guys. Keep the uh, keep the knees high. High knees, core tight. You know how it goes. Some cool bloomings over here with this uh, western sand cherry. Very neat. Of course, the honey mesquite is a favorite of all of the animals. It always has been, it seems. We got a badger running around. Oh, the badgers are still around. These badgers haven't died then. How are these How are these ants doing? Man, these ants are totally fine. These ants are having no problems. Kind of curious how our, how our deer mice are working as well. 13 of 40 plus 37 juveniles. Holy cow. That's amazing. So these guys are really chugging along in the old reproduction phase. Honeybees apparently just kind of do what they do, I guess. They're not really doing, you know what I mean? It's like they're not, um, they're not expanding. I guess the population doesn't really grow or shrink. Where are these rabbits coming from? I do wonder. Let's take a look at the population. Actually, let's zoom in a little bit further here. Let's take a look at the juvenile population of everything else. No badger juveniles. 235 days until reproduction. Holy cow. So that does not happen quick at all when it comes to badgers. Over here, our grasses have expanded across the prairie looking delightfully full. And in fact, we could probably use another couple of trees over here. I just feel like it, it feels like a little barren, you know what I mean? 
Let's see if we can put down some more of these eastern cottonwoods because they're amazing and I love them. Not a lot of space to put it in. I think we're actually getting to the point where there is like legitimately so much on the screen that even this computer may may be having a hard time keeping up with it. I don't know, maybe not. It's doing okay. Where can I oh God, where can I put this thing? There's got to be a little space, right? It's like when you're trying to find when you're trying to find space, come here. Right Oh, there we go. Got it. Boom. Extra shade for everyone. Hope you guys enjoy this. It's like when you're trying to find space on your fridge to put more magnets or something. Oh, I can put one here too. Yes. Yes, more cottonwoods. Oh, these cottonwoods are so good. I love them so much. Can probably even fit one more down here by these bison. Excellent. Now let's go light on the grasses and heavier on kind of like these trees and, and mesquites and flowers and stuff because those grasses, I remember the developer had said that like the grasses were having trouble because they were rendering individually or something. So instead of rendering like a pack of grass, it was rendering each individual grass. And I can completely understand how that could tax anyone's computer no matter what the computer is built like. A couple sand cherries down here. I'm going to go ahead and put, while we're at it, let's get all of our energy back because quite frankly, I've got tons to spend. A couple of cone flowers though. I don't mind putting these guys down at all. I love cone flowers. They look so awesome. Pronghorn antelope. I think a few of those would be nice to have over here. A couple of small guys too. I'd like to get maybe a couple of jackrabbits. And when I say a couple of jackrabbits, I mean like several packs of them. There's one pack of jackrabbits. I want to see tons of juvenile jackrabbits run around. I love rabbits. I don't mind if you guys multiply. Try and take down the, the entire biome. Let there be a rabbit uprising. It's going to be like Skynet, but with rabbits. I'm all for this. I could care less. Go oh, yeah. Look at the rabbits. Fall out of the sky. It's raining rabbits. God said, let there be rabbits, and rabbits there are. What happened over here? It's a dead bison. What killed you guys? Must have been a wolf or something. Who knows? Oh, this wolf is running somewhere. What are you looking at, buddy? What do you think you're doing? What are you do Oh, no! Right to the ground! That rabbit never even saw it coming! Oh, the last thing that rabbit saw was the owl bot. <laughs> Uh, I can't even feel bad about it because that's the way it goes. But this wolf, this wolf should now have his hunger completely sated. And he does. And with his meal flowing through his belly, he is going for a little much needed rest. Put down some moths over here because the moths are not getting enough love. And I feel like they should be because moths are important too. Super pollinators. Do they look as beautiful as butterflies? No, we can get a nice close-up right here. Actually, that is a pretty darn high-res picture. I had never really looked at this quite this closely before. We need something by the water. That Oh, no, another rabbit just bit the dust. You coyote, you. Oh, what did you do to my rabbit? Oh, well. It's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Man, there's rabbits dying everywhere. There are rabbits dying everywhere. Let's put some frogs down. Frogs by the water makes total sense to me. And I think that they would appreciate having a little aquatic environment to deal with. In fact, I'm going to put down all kinds of frogs. I'm going to put down some over here as well. Hopefully, the wolves won't eat my frogs. You guys don't eat frogs, do you? Is that even a snack for you guys? That's like three Pringles. I mean, what is that really worth? Is that even worth your time? These jackrabbits are getting jacked, though. That's for sure. You can see something right over here got taken down. Is that a bison? That is a bison that got taken down. You know what? More jackrabbits. You guys are trying to take down all my jackrabbits. You know what? I'm going to make more. Bring in the hollow projector or whatever it is that brings these rabbits into creation. Fire up the reactors. There will be jackrabbits. So saith gray. And the jackrabbits are a little gray. They got a little gray to them. A little gray, a little brown. I would consider them my brethren, though. Garter snakes, huh? Yeah. Why not? 
couple of garter snakes. I'm trying to remember exactly what garter snakes eat, but I'm pretty sure it's really, really small stuff. Because I don't think that garter snakes have much size to them, if any. I remember the ones around my house were probably about, I don't know, like a foot and a half, two feet. Though garter snakes will bite in self-defense, their bite is not poisonous and their teeth are not very long. They are generally terrified of humans and would much rather flee danger than attack. For these reasons, garter snakes are considered harmless to humans. Garter snakes' sharp teeth are far too small to pose much of a threat to predators like foxes or crows. And they are carnivores and insectivores. They eat mice, frogs, worms, and baby birds. Okay, so these guys are eating the frogs if they get over there. Oh man, look at that, another rabbit down. Thanks to this gosh dang wolf. I'll bet you're the same wolf that has been beating the crap out of all of my rabbits. Well, technically I made you, so I can't really fault you for what you're doing. I think that rabbit's running away from that wolf over there. Oh no, there was no chance. Speaking of rabbits running though, I will tell you, I have a ton of rabbits where I live, like a legitimate ton of rabbits. They are everywhere. And those little guys can haul. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. They are faster than you would believe. My wife and I love to take walks around our neighborhood and look at the... We have a lot of wildlife around the neighborhood. And we have plenty of rabbits around the neighborhood. And we like to count rabbits. That's just a, a little fun thing that her and I like to do. Usually right around twilight. That's right about when the rabbits are at their... Maximum activity in my area. Oh, look at these two guys walking together like they're best pals. You got uh, Turner and Hooch over here. This rabbit's not afraid at all. He's like, no big deal. What are you going to do, coyote? Yeah, you lay down. You don't even look at this rabbit. Look, do not look at the rabbit. Look at the ground. Did you take out a frog? What is that? What did you just eat? He did. That coyote ate a frog. That frog, what did he do? What did he do to deserve it? Oh, I know. He was in the circle of life. Well, that is the breaks, I guess, frog. Sorry, man. You will be remembered. You will be remembered by the grazer, the gray lens, and the... What was it called? What was the, what was the rainforest called? Grayberg? Pretty sure it was Grayberg. No juveniles yet in frog territory, but they haven't been around for very long. Let's use up the rest of our energy, guys. We are almost fully complete here. This is going to be all, pretty much the end. You know what I mean? I mean, we're right at the end of this entire biome. We have taken up the entire biome. A couple more of these guys. We'll do a few of these as well. A couple of asters. Here we are. A little switchgrass. Wow, switchgrass is... Holy cow. Switchgrass is quite impressive, actually. Oh, look. It's almost like the flowers are actually blooming. This is crazy. I don't know if they're loading or blooming. Let's watch. No! Look! Look, guys, they're blooming! That was cool! They're popping open! That's awesome! Huh! Alright, let's go ahead and head on through real quick. One last little run through here. Take a look at what's going on. We've got antelope gallivanting around left and right, to and fro. Looking awesome, actually. We have this rabbit over here. I'm gonna say he's sleeping. I saw his ears twitch. That counts. Not gonna, I'm not gonna think for a moment that he got ripped in half by some horrible predator. Oh, well, it's not horrible, I guess. He's just hungry. Bison lingering atop the beautiful hill here, the wonderful hillside, looking with his dark eyes upon all of his various friends and foes within the Greylands. Bees at the other side of the switchgrass over here. Some beautiful eastern cottonwoods towering above, towering up toward the sky of the biome. A little patch of completely bare area right here. And then we're back to lush greatness. And that is the Greylands, folks. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Taito Ecology. I've had a lot of fun with this game. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.